Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of Developer2Architect.com. In today's lesson, Lesson 26, we'll be taking a look at Agile Architecture Review Boards. Most companies, especially large companies, have architecture review boards. These are uh, boards that consist usually of architects led by some sort of mediator, which actually I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, the architecture review board does a lot of things within a company, but primarily uh, they determine the standards that are used um, within the department or the company. They also approve solutions that either architects or development teams approach them with. Uh, they also approve variances of standards. Uh, for example, if uh, let's say Angular is not a standard, yet you want to use Angular on a project, you would approach an architecture review board to get an approved variance based on a certain technology standard. Uh, but they also provide guidance and also recommendations based on particular solutions. While architecture review boards are very uh, powerful, but also an important aspect of the whole product development life cycle, unfortunately, they tend to look like this. And I'm really referring to the left-hand side of this highway here, where you see there's some sort of bottleneck. All of these cars here are all requests or solutions waiting for approvals or recommendations or some type of, of uh, uh, variants and what you can see is most architecture review boards end up being these big bottlenecks. What I want to show you in this short lesson is some very simple techniques and some very simple tips to allow you to be on the right hand side of this highway. In other words, to remove those bottlenecks that exist with a lot of architecture review boards and essentially streamline the process to make it part of the overall solutioning as opposed to a bottleneck or impediment uh, to forward progress. So the five basic tips I want to show you are as follows. First, uh, what I like to do is prefer shorter, more frequent meetings to longer, less frequent ones. A lot of companies that I'm in and participate in in the, the overall project or solutioning process have monthly or even sometimes quarterly architecture review boards. And what I have found from firsthand experience is that this is not frequent enough to be able to get either in front of the review board for approval or even discussion. And so what I like to do is perform more frequent meetings um, much shorter. So instead of having a, a four hour once a month meeting, what I like to do is twice a week, uh, let's say Tuesday and Thursday, have an architecture review board meeting for one hour, let's say from three to four. This allows you to be part of the development process. Any sort of questions, approvals, variances, recommendations, advice, all of these things that an architecture review board can provide are available twice a week as opposed to having to wait once a month. You know, the other tip that I have found works really well with effective agile architecture review boards is to make sure that the agenda is publicly available for easy access. In other words, on a wiki, for instance. Uh, so each meeting would have a link so that anybody, any stakeholder, any developer, any architect could sign up for a slot within a particular meeting to discuss a particular project or a solution or recommendations or advice or even a variance uh, approval. Now, I did mention I was going to talk about the mediator a little bit. So what I typically do is rotate the mediator. So in other words, let's say we have an architecture review board consisting of six architects. Uh, each architect would be a mediator for a particular meeting, and so that kind of rotates around. Now, specific to making the agenda available, one of the things the mediator is also responsible for is to make sure we just don't meet for meeting's sake. In other words, if there's nothing on the agenda by noon, and let's say in this case I have a three o'clock meeting on Tuesdays and Thursdays, if nothing is on the agenda, then quite simply, the meeting gets canceled. And that's up to the mediator to kind of uh, assess that to see if there's anything up for discussion. Now, the third tip, speaking of the meetings, is to make sure that you classify each topic that's going to be presented as either up for, quote, discussion or up for, quote, decision ahead of time. This is important. As a matter of fact, in our wiki, 
within each meeting, we have categories to say a slot for discussion, a slot for decision. And, and this is important for several reasons. One, I may not be looking for a decision at this point, but rather a discussion. However, if we've already discussed it and I'm looking for a decision, that kind of sets the stage to really give me some information ahead of time or give the Architecture Review Board information ahead of time to limit the discussion if a decision is being made. But most specifically, if something is up for decision, the mediator is responsible for making sure the right stakeholders and decision makers are present at the meeting, especially if there's things up for decision. Um, if you have an architecture review board like we do uh, that meets twice a week on ours on Tuesday and Thursday at three to four, then everybody's busy and you want to make sure that if something's up for decision that the right people are there to actually make that decision to keep things moving along. And finally, the last tip is to make sure that you place a hard limit on presentations and make sure that everybody knows that ahead of time. There's nothing worse than an architecture review board, especially one that only meets for an hour, <laughs> twice, twice a week, that you have somebody come in and start presenting an architecture that takes an hour. And so uh, this is communicated uh, within the wiki. So if somebody signs up, they know that they have a 20 minute slot. And if it takes 40 minutes to describe something, well, that could be one slot or two slots, or maybe it has to be spread across two different meetings. You know, using these simple techniques will help you create more of an effective architecture review board and create more of kind of a architecture review board within the overall agile process, making it part of the solution as opposed to an impediment of solutioning. So this has been Lesson 26, Agile Architecture Review Boards. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and this has been Software Architecture Monday. Stay tuned next Monday for another architecture lesson. Thank you.